Incoming connection request. Still don't know who that is. Connected to Kilo 7 Juliet Lima Juliet. I've been in this ongoing conversation with the guys over the comm syndicate about the actual usefulness of HF radio in a true emergency. And I'm not talking about backup lines of communication. I think it does really shine for that and maybe in the ongoing management of a disaster. But in a true emergency where I need to contact somebody right now who then has the resources to come and help me urgently, I just don't think HF, for the extent that it is emphasized in this amateur radio YouTube MCOM sphere, I just don't think it's that useful outside of some niche circumstances such as if I am in a remote Antarctic outpost or I'm in a ship at sea or in an airplane or someplace that's really, really far from civilization. And that is just our best line of communication back to civilization so that they can mount some sort of retrieval. But then Taylor over at Rant Strategies had this to say to me during one of our recent live streams. It was if I was truly your lifeline for an emergency you were having and I was, you know, a thousand miles away, but because I could tell you, hey, you're having a heart attack, Go ahead and take 324 milligrams of aspirin. Go ahead and take 0 0.4 milligrams of nitro. If you, because you can send, you know, pictures over it, if you have access to an EKG machine, at least let me get a picture of it. I can read it for you and, you know, do a 12 lead and kind of diagnose you. Well, that is a very interesting concept now, isn't it? For some background, Taylor and I are both paramedics, only he works on one side of the country and I work on the other, and I have yet to appear in an FDNY swimsuit calendar, but Taylor brings up a good point. Can medical telemetry data be transmitted over HF radio with a high enough quality that it can be read and interpreted on the other side. So I've been doing a lot of practice with the PNW Minuteman lately, and you can check out a link to his blog in the show notes below. But I asked him yesterday to send me a 12 lead EKG that he ripped from the internet somewhere over VARA AC, which is a very good data mode, very robust, and he's about 500 miles away from me. So he did have to compress it a bit, and I just wanted to see what I could do to read it on the other side. So check it out. Receiving file transfer data. I'll speed up the video of the download while I discuss what an EKG actually is. This is an electrocardiogram, and it's a graphical representation of the heart muscle's electrical activity printed onto actual graph paper. You've probably seen a lot of these in advertising, and they're almost all wrong. And as a healthcare provider, it drives me absolutely nuts because every aspect, every little shape and wiggle on that EKG is labeled, and it must occur within very narrowly defined size and time ranges, or else it means something's wrong. Healthcare providers go through a lot of training to learn how to interpret these correctly. Of course, we're assisted by computers, but they're not always right. And even after all of these years of reading EKGs and learning all about them, I still feel like I only know a fraction of what I actually could possibly know about these things. The type of EKG that the PNW Minuteman is sending me today is called a 12-lead EKG, and this gives us a more thorough diagnostic view of the heart. You can see there's multiple leads on the screen there of the example that I put up. And to make a good interpretation, I'll need to see most of the grid lines on the graph paper, and I'll need to see fairly clean EKG tracings because I'll be evaluating all of the little tiny bumps and blips on that EKG for the proper spacing and the proper sizing. File successfully received. Size. 71,812 bytes. We had a great connection today, so it took just over seven minutes at 2300 hertz to download. Let's go ahead and pull it up and I'll see what I can do with it. Well, I opened this up on a different Windows photo viewer so that I can pan around and zoom in a little bit easier, but this is very usable. I see that in the compression, we lost the little tiny grid squares, but we did get to keep the large grid squares, so I can work with that. The tracing is fairly clean. At a glance, this looks like not a very happy heart, but let's go ahead and start by interpreting the rhythm of this. So I'll zoom in down here at the bottom. I believe we have just this contiguous V1 lead and I see P waves. So this is a sinus something, but let's count the rate and we can use that with these nice large grid square boxes that were preserved. So I will start here on a spike that lines up with that grid square and I'll start counting 300, 150, 175. So this next spike landed somewhere in between 75 and 100. So this is a normal rate. So we'll call this sinus rhythm, but you can see, look how far in between the P wave and the QRS complex this is. So this is a huge gap, this is abnormal. 
and we can see right here this is much larger than even one grid square which is 0.2 seconds so this indicates a first degree AV block because they're all consistent and I don't see any dropped beats so the actual rhythm interpretation will be sinus rhythm with first degree AV block but let's start looking around at some of the other abnormalities on this EKG so when I look for ST elevation which might indicate a heart attack I always start here at the septals septal leads and I see it looks fairly normal this one is a little elevated this one that's really tough to tell I don't I don't think that's elevated so I don't think we have criteria for heart attack there let's go over here lateral yeah I see a flip T wave and a little bit of biphasic I don't know how much of an issue that would be sometimes that can indicate that the heart muscle is not getting enough oxygen but in this case I only see that one I don't see the rest of them are flipped and AVR is okay to be flipped so I would want to compare that to an old EKG now this has kind of the feel of left ventricular hypertrophy we've got some really really big spikes here and I don't see great progression from these S waves up into R waves I would have to look it up but I'm suspecting we've got left ventricular hypertrophy and we've got an access issue here too this should probably be up right here in lead three and so for that being so steeply downward inflected and not upright at all except for this little tiny blip I am going to say we've probably got a left axis deviation less than 30 degrees so there was also a little bit of a notched P wave up here but I can't tell if this is maybe some artifact or what because it's not really widespread but we might have some atrial enlargement too but let's go ahead and give our answer to the PNW Minuteman and see how we did I think we'll call that a success medical diagnostics such as an EKG can be transmitted over amateur radio HF bands with a high enough quality over a reasonable enough time frame to be interpreted on the other side.